And that is the issue here or situation here. We, we don't know how to hold on to our understanding for the rest of our lives. Or we don't make it a part of our lives. We only act on it or understand it based on present situations. And that is why you have to really think abroad, like concerning God's word. And I mean, I'm, I'm maybe if I hear that Portia is in a relationship, you know, and like, uh, I don't want her to be in a relationship with that person because maybe the person is having a very bad character, but she's not underage to be in a relationship. Maybe Portia is a 17, let's say she's 17, and as she is 17, um, she she to my parents they will say she's young but she 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 shouldn't she should concentrate on her studies and other things like that that is what parents will say and that is what i would also i also want to say because she's my sister but in order for me to tell her the truth because if i don't explain everything to her i can just tell her it's wrong and it ends there but i can tell her it's wrong this is my reason because this guy is this this guy is that this guy is that but that is not just it. I've made her see only one side of it. So to explain, to open her eyes, well, I would tell her, actually, you know, because many people, because they are afraid to let people know the truth, like they want to keep them ignorant so that they can continue to, like, um, let's say, have authority over them or let them obey them, like maybe if your, your parents sometimes they say that they tell their child or their children who are ladies that don't let a man touch you but actually it's not wrong for someone to touch you a man to touch you um, and uh, but they will not say they will not explain it to the person and i also read recently that Ghana they were trying to introduce one educational system about sex education and other things like that now people are saying oh no they shouldn't they shouldn't they shouldn't and sometimes it really will your parents even talk to you about sex, your biological parents. Why? Because of that stigma we have in us. And so um, I I can tell Portia, you see, uh, it's not wrong for you to be in a relationship now. And you can go ahead to be in a relationship. It and I have to openly tell her it could be the will of God. Yeah, I, I have to openly tell her. It could be the will of God, but you know, and and that is what sometimes uh, I'm trying to explain to uh, the church. And many times, many people abuse it. Just like if we preach the message of grace, many people abuse it. And that is the truth. It is. It is. There is no sin, you know. But many people ask that. Um, the Bible says that apart from one sin, that is if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, it is unforgivable. Or one sin is one sin that cannot be forgiven. But what we know is that, and that sin of that cannot be forgiven is the same as denying Jesus. That is that sin we are talking about because there is nothing you can do about it again. But uh, if you do any any sin you do at all, and you ask for forgiveness before you die, He will forgive you. And according to what is written in scriptures. He will remember no more. I, you know, I heard somewhere that someone, one man of them was saying that he's not from what I have heard. He's not of God. And from the way he does his things, he's not of God. But he said that God, who told you that God forgives and forgets? And they said that if God forgives and forgets, then he would have forgiven Lucifer long ago. Or he said God doesn't forgive. That's what he says. You know, God doesn't forgive. Yeah, from what you say, that's why God doesn't forgive. Because if God forgives, then He wouldn't have. He would have forgiven uh, Lucifer. And then if God forgives, there would have been no hell from what they are saying. Yeah, there would have been no If He's forever, everlasting, you know, long suffering according to uh, what Galatians teaches us, the fruit of the Spirit, which is His. Um, um, character, God's character. So, you know, so many people will tell you, don't listen, or if I want to, you know, cocoon lies, I see, it's not going to listen to other preachers. But 
The other truth of it is, if you listen to some preachers, you will become confused. And 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 but if I don't get the chance, because you know, sometimes uh, I will be rushing over. If I don't get the chance to explain to you that, if you listen to other, I will just say, if you listen to other preachers, you will get confused. Then you will go to a place and you will hear another part of the preaching. They say those preachers who tell you not to listen to other preachers are trying to enslave you. You will think your pastor is trying to do that. Meanwhile, you will not make your mind think abroad. And the only person who enables you to be diverse or dynamic in your thinking is the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. And that's what the Bible says that in John 3. It says those who are born of the Spirit, they are like the wind. You don't know where they are blowing from and you don't know where they are blowing to. So, many, many instances, many people because they don't have a relationship with the Spirit of God, they are not able to know the truth because the Bible calls him the Spirit of the, or the Spirit of Truth. Jesus said, "When he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, you see, made more than two instances from John 14 to John 16, more than two instances, Jesus calls him the Spirit of Truth, and so the Spirit of God is the one who who will enable you to see the truth from all." Point and all aspects. And the reason why I'm saying this is because when you read Romans chapter 12, he talks about many, 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 many things, different instances, because he's he's the apostle of the Gentiles, or he's the apostle unto the Gentiles. And if you read further, that's what he's talking about. If you read even he talks about verse 3, he says, according to every man according to the measure of faith. According to the measure of faith. So if I see that this person is doing something and just like how i'm preaching now it doesn't mean that i'm the best preacher or i know everything i know that i listen to other preachers it's not only preachers that i listen to i listen to my father in the Lord. but i have told myself i will not listen to preachers that he bishop hasn't endorsed or he, i know that he doesn't listen to you see because there are some preachers, when you listen to them, in quotes, I'm not bringing down any man of God. You might end up getting pride from them. You might think the way they do things, it's okay. And if you are trying to do things the way they do it, you might end up becoming a proud minister. But those people are, according to their measure of faith, look at this way, what they are doing is not pride. But you in trying to do it will end up becoming a proud person. And same way with even leadership in the church. Sometimes in trying to be um, to be uh, to maintain order, you might end up becoming a very easily offended individual or a very sensitive person. Every wrong this person does you are quick to talk about it, quick to identify, you don't let things pass. So most of the times if 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 an individual is not diverse in the way he or she does things, it, it causes a lot of harm. And the only source or the only he, as I mentioned, is the Spirit of God. And one of the um, simplest or one of the um, um, shortcuts into all these parts or ways of thinking is one of the fruit of the Spirit, that is humility. If, 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 if you, that's why the Bible says that um, each man should uh, uh, consider the other or he should uh, prefer the other. That's what the Bible is. Preferably, he should prefer the other. So, if, 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 I think it's here. And also, talk, it says that, and also talks about simplicity and other things like that. Verse uh, 10, it says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another so i prefer this person instead of me like i prefer this person to myself so um this is an apostle of jesus talking but sometimes if you are going to look at it this way you will end up saying oh then i've, 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 I've offended many people many times and sometimes yes it's true the spirit of god is drawing your attention to that or convicting you of sin or of righteousness but if you are going to sit down sometimes and look at how the Lord Jesus did things, because
Because sometimes the apostles, the Bible does not talk about some aspects of their lives. So, but then Jesus has been extensively broken down for us. You see Jesus having an enemy amongst him. He endures the enemy to a certain point in time and tells the enemy, do what you have to do quickly. And Jesus wouldn't say it like I'm saying. He would say, oh, Jesus, please do what you have to do quickly. I believe that Judas would have received a shout from the Lord. And Jesus telling Peter, get me behind me, you Satan. I believe that he would have received a shout or an increase in his voice. Um, some people say that, uh, I think that same man of God was saying that, they said uh, Jesus was the meekest person. But when he entered into the uh, church, he turned their tables upside down and he lashed them with whips. And they are saying that if Jesus could beat outsiders like that, what do you think he would to Peter and James and John and Paul? Maybe he was, the man was saying that he would make Peter kneel down and raise up his hands <laughs> and tell him that he, or he would tell him, you will not eat for today. So, there will be people are, many people are trying to analyze the thing and they are saying that the whole story has been cooked up. The whole story about Jesus has been cooked up. But uh, if you look at the way the Lord Jesus did things, you might also be quick to call people Judases. Quick to call people Judases. And that's why many times it's very difficult for you to work with people of understanding or let's say spiritual people. Because in um, 1 Corinthians, it's still 745, time is not going to be afraid. 1 Corinthians about 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. No, verse 15. This is, but he that is spiritual judge of all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. And the sister says, For who has known the mind of the Lord? Remember, we're talking about the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So he's talking about spiritually minded people or spiritual person. And he says, um, but he that is spiritual judges all things. In this case, the Bible is not saying that the person is judging as the Lord told us not to judge, that we may not be judged. Uh, if you look at uh, translations, you know, when the Bible is translated from a certain language to the other, what the Bible means is, you see, the Bible says spiritual, not just judging as in judging. Jesus was talking to natural people or men. If I do this man, he's talking about natural people. So he's saying spiritual, uh, he that is spiritual, judges all things. He's not talking about just judging as in judging. The Bible is talking about discerning, discerning what is going. Because the, spirit, the gift of discernment actually is for you to be able to discern what spirit is in action or is in play. So if I have the gift of discernment, and I'm sitting down and Sister Victoria is singing. I will know she's singing from the flesh or she's singing by the Spirit of God. Or this gift she's using is a demonic one. You see. Or you can go to a place, someone is praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And some of them are demonic tongues. So if I'm if I'm sitting there and I have the gift of discernment, I will know. And sometimes it could come as a word of knowledge if, 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 if like, and usually when the Spirit of God wants to show someone that is like on the, uh, let me say, primary or elementary level of receiving messages from God, he will, one, one sign of descent, uh, the gift of discernment is the nose, for you to smell, for you to smell and know what smell is. If someone if you smell good smell here, you know this is good smell. You know this is rose, this thing. You know this is a bag. Ah, this one is that Victoria's rice is burning. That's the way it makes the Ah, And if, if you pass by, or you enter Portia's room and she has released some bad guys, you know, ah, yes. this one, Portia <laughs> don't do that thing, that's stood in the room, you see, so, it's discerning, you don't need anyone to tell you, <laughs> 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 if you enter my room, 
you will smell anointing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, uh, that is it basically. Because you know, there are, there are many, 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 many things. So, like, uh, if the Bible talks about the spiritual man journey, it's talking about discerning. So, I'm not going around looking for who is wrong. But when you see the way this person is talking, sometimes you know this one is a lie. You, you, so you are not the one when it comes to the spirit of discernment or the gift of discernment. Uh, we, we, we are not those triggering it, it is information that comes from Him. So you are not the one saying that this person is a thief, but. The information comes inside you that this person is a thief. But with the heart of compassion you have, inside you, you the human aspect of you, which has the word of God in, isn't looking at the person from an eye of, this is a sinner. But it stays in, the, in your subconscious where you know this one is wrong or this one is what the Lord is trying to point out. Which is what the word of God does. Jesus said, I've not come to condemn the world. But that is what we think he is doing, or that is what sinners will think he is doing. But actually, the word of God shines on us. And we see that spot or those spots on us. That does not mean he's talking about it. He's wanting you to see that thing. Like God comes to Cain and asks him, What have you done? Oh, sorry, where is your brother? God is not. And it's not that God doesn't know. It's like he's opening the, he wants to open the person's eyes to what the person has done, that what you've done is wrong. But the person doesn't see it that way. The person sees it that God is trying to like judge me or condemn me. So sometimes we try to be defensive, like Cain is defensive. Am I my brother's keeper? At other times, like Adam, we try to run away from him. Because God asked him, who told you? When God asked him, who told you? Depending on the tone, because it's a voice. Because the Bible says that Adam heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. It's not that God was walking. Go and sit down and read it. Well. The Bible says, and the voice of God was walking in the cool of the day. So, he, he was running away from the voice. So, who told you? Sometimes, I mean, I wish I had this understanding when I was much more... Uh, and I wish my parents also were spiritual, you know, in a way. Because if I hear them shout at me, why did you do this and this? I will not see the shouts pass. And that is what sometimes we don't see clearly because sometimes they are acting out of compassion, but they don't know how to handle the emotional aspect. And that is why we really need the Spirit of God to work on many, 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 many things in our lives. We, we, and that, that is why, many, and because of our ignorance, many people don't actually know what God has to do again in their lives. Because when you go to church, they don't know what, 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 what is the thing that they have. But there are many things. Sometimes, if, if, and, and it all comes down to you knowing the Spirit of Truth or the Spirit of God. Sometimes, you know, when after you've spoken to someone, it has happened to me many, many times. I I go into my prayer close as I'm praying. The moment I start praying, the first thing the Spirit of God does is to rebuke me. You didn't speak well to this person, or what you said to this person is this, is that, is that. And so I end up when I finish praying, I pick my phone and oh, I'm sorry, what I said this, this, this is wrong, or I'm, I I lied. Or I did this, or I didn't speak to the person well. I will call the person and say, Oh, uh, you know, uh, if I spoke in a way like, Oh, go away, what you did is this, 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 and, and it was from my heart, and I was not joking about it. I will call the person and say, Oh, how are you? To change the whole thing. But many people don't know that the Spirit of God is concerned about all these things. So it's like, uh, he, and that's what the Bible calls and uh, speaks about the spiritual man. But and the Bible says, yet he himself is judged of no man. It doesn't mean people will not try to 
read meaning just like Jesus. That doesn't mean the Lord Jesus wasn't um, spiritual. He was, but people try to judge him. But a judge of no man means that that person judges God. That person, the one who sees to what the person is doing, is God. And 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 so one of the things we have to understand when we come to Romans twelve is because the Bible talks about if you're going to look at Romans twelve, it's like you're supposed to live a very perfect life. The Bible says, "Recompense to no man evil for evil." So, uh, my 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 friend, I think back back in my senior high school, the most of these things I, I learned them. Uh, I didn't meet these things in scriptures, but I remember one time like that in my school. There were some people when they come to when they come to me, they would say, "Oh, man of God!" Like not as in man of God, as in the word man of God. They would use a jargon like, "Oh, what are you? Uh, I want this. Oh, can you give me?" God, you just mention man of God. There's nothing you can say again because you know scripture says. When they come, you will them and give 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 them. Then my roommates will say, oh, people will not agree again. When they come, my roommates are those who sack them. Because if they say, if it is, if it finish, what will we do? So, once they know that I don't sack outsiders, when they say, oh, I'm going to your job also. And they just go straight, they open and they will fetch my shit up because I used to do my shit up. <laughs> It was plenty, big container like this, when I went to school. So, and, and, and so they would come for it and come for it. So, one particular day, uh, I, I, I slept and the Lord gave me a thing. So, the Lord was stressing on one thing because I saw someone and the person uh, asked me for something. And, and I was going to give. And the Spirit of God ministered to me. Your giving him will not stop him. Because me giving him was to prevent him from thinking that I'm greedy. So the Spirit of the Lord taught me. Your giving him will not prevent him from thinking what he wants to think. They will definitely think what they want to think. Or he will definitely think what he wants to think. So your not giving him is not what is shaping that mindset in him. So he wasn't also telling me not to give. So uh, that's what the Bible says that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So uh, and and then you're not giving to it's not a sin. Now the only time it becomes a sin is when the Spirit of God is leading you to and you don't. That is when something becomes a sin. So no matter how offended you are. If, if the person is asking for many, 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 but the Spirit of God is saying, go ahead, continue to endure it, continue to continue, and you don't, failing the person is trying to be wise over you, then it becomes you disobeying the voice of God. So many times, many of us don't get these things clear because if you are going to listen to people, they will tell you that uh, when you don't give money to beggars, and sometimes men of God will tell us we have to be careful. Some of them have to work to, you know, the Bible says eat the work, the hunter does not work on the one that doesn't work should not eat. It's biblical. But and the man of God will say that which is true. But the man of God might not have the chance to tell you the other aspects of it or the other sides of it. You might end up seeing that same man of God giving money out to beggars. And, 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 and that is the thing here. If the Spirit of God is asking you to, whether the person is whole, has two legs and two hands and is begging you, and the person is young, of working age, and you feel and know that the Spirit of God is leading you, give. That is the problem many of us have, and we are missing the that's the main that's the core thing here. If the spirit of God is leading you, give. And sometimes when the spirit of God leads you to do something, it ends up putting burdens upon your heart. 
beg things are coming hand because after you've done it, the person will end up saying, well, I don't need your money, what is the help? Then you end up thinking, why did I even do it? And it will even complicate that thing. You know, it will even complicate the thing. And sometimes it could be in your class, probably uh, you are getting notes from someone. Oh, what did the teacher say? Then the person says, Oh, were you too listening for yourself? Then you say, Oh, find it. Or then you take the notes yourself. Every day you don't write notes. You are always asking me, always asking me. I will show you some. I will mafia you. I will mafia you some. You see, that is the problem here. So, We've, we've really got to know who the Spirit of God is. And, and we have to um, desire to follow or desire to receive from Him. So many times, if you otherwise, because if you are going to look at this, it will look as if it's another law He's giving to you that um, do not reveal evil for evil. And if you listen to Jesus' messages, He says, Blessed are this, for they shall this. Blessed are this, for they shall this. And Jesus says that. Any, any man who does this, this is this. Because he talks about also, he talks about uh, divorce or divorce. And Jesus gives one exemption, except fornication. The Lord gives it. And some of the things are there, they are more than fornication. Some of them, someone who is willing to kill you or poison you, the person is willing to poison you. You see the person putting the poison in the food, you are standing in front and so in your head. And you are going to forgive such a person. That is we see especially saying Apu, because you don't understand forgiveness. I will forgive the person as in I don't hold anything in the in my mind for the person, but I can't draw you closer to myself for you to hurt me again. Because you are very dangerous. The person can kneel down and say, Oh, I will not do it again. It is the devil. So oh I understand because me myself I'm not about doing that. I can also do that. But uh, I can text you how are you doing fine, but please can we go and rent another place and stay you come with husband and wife again? Yeah, because I can this one this time I can be sleeping, you come and hold my neck and dress me and kiss me. You see. And 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 so it it there are a lot of um things uh involved in it. But you know, the thing here is when the devil comes in it becomes really confusing because currently now just like i'm also ministering now it might look as if i'm ministering based on the current situation happening around him because of the that is why i'm ministering this ministry but if you're going to look at it from when the devil comes in probably the devil can give people many thoughts you've not thought of it but uh I'm just making you open to the reality of how the devil works. He will be putting it in someone's head. So, one day, one day, two. Me too. Me too. Uh, me too. Me too. If I also do. So, this will be Pastor If I also do this, this will be Pastor And even me talking about it this way is very dangerous to me because. Just like maybe I, because there are sometimes I see something about someone that God wants to use. Or just like maybe uh, I see something about this person. And I don't want to mention it because that thing will provoke and be, and even that person might be confused. Because in trying, the person will want to act as if I don't want it to look as if it's because Pastor said this is God will use me for this and that. That is why. I don't want to, I don't want to. Others people say I'm a man pleaser. The person in trying to prevent such, to be prevent painting such a, a picture, the person ends up veering off God's purpose for him or her. Then sometimes in trying to fulfill that, the person ends up overdoing it. You see, and that is when the Spirit of God comes again. And that's what the Bible says in um, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And, and I will read it before concerning the Bible says a man's wisdom uh, uh, enlightens his face or makes his countenance shine. And then the Bible talks comes down and says that because we don't know um, 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 the right time to do this or not to do it, the Bible says the misery upon man is great. Then the Bible goes on to say that 
but the wise in heart descends both time and judgment. The, uh, uh, the wise in heart descends both that is when this judge not in uh, uh, first Corinthians 2 comes in. And, and, it's, and that is why the most important, that's why Jesus said, it is better for you that I go because I will send you another comforter. But many people don't have a relationship with him. And that is the problem. If you have a relationship with the Spirit of God, you don't worry much about a lot of things. Because in according to Romans 12, the Bible says that after you have con- uh, been transformed, the Bible says that ye may be able to, verse 2, that ye may be able to prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. So it is um, um, those who are spiritually minded who will be able to know what is like the best is in God's plan. No matter how the way you will go and go and go, those are the people in Romans 8, 28, you can say that all things work together for the good of these people. Because no matter what you do, you can't fight against those people. And, and that is why those people, those people wouldn't care, as Romans 12 says, but God fights for them. And actually, those people know life and death lies in the power of my tongue. If I say it, knowing that God has given me authority, it will happen. But in walking according to His way, those people intend to abase themselves or break themselves low, which is what the Lord Jesus did. Because many times Jesus will say, Don't you think I have the power to do this or do that or do that? But I have restricted myself for this cause or for this purpose. Jesus tells John the Baptist, Suffer it so that we may fulfill all righteousness. So, because John said, I'm not worthy to even uh, unlace the latchet of his, of his shoe. I'm not fit to do that. And, and, and many times, that is a problem we have. Because sometimes in angry men of God, if you, if you, some people say, anyone, he, nobody is God, nobody is this, but if you look in scripture, scripture says that those people are worthy of double honor. It's in the Bible. And uh, Hebrews 13, verse 7 and then verse 14, the Bible says, um, obey those who have uh, the rule over you. The Bible says, for they watch over your souls. That's why how can a human being be watching over the soul of another human being? Which is, which is nonsense. If I say nonsense, it means no, something that is of nonsense. There is no sense in it. You can't understand it. Because how can I say, oh, I have to tell Bishop, I have to tell Bishop before I do anything I want to do. And it's because of wisdom, because I know that this is the I can take decisions that will destroy me. So I've got to be careful. So it is, it's all wisdom. So it's already time. So because it's time to is sleeping already. Victoria is my time. When I'm preaching at church, I'm looking at church. When sleep is doing it. Ah, because you and Bosha have been looking at you and Bosha. When the time is doing something is doing your buttons, then you'll be looking at each other. And then, <laughs> partners in crime, I hope they repent. Yeah, because I know them.